got some past exam questions here on year 12 spectroscopy. Um, so it covers things like mass spec and infrared. So if you wanted to have a go at these, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So you can download them and then have a go and play on for the answers. Okay, so here we go. I've already done them. So I'm just going to talk through what I've done and explain any little sort of tips and tricks along the way. Okay, so the first one, we've got um, an atmospheric pollutant with a formula CXHYO and the pollutant's infrared spectrum and mass spectra are shown below. So quickly, looking at the infrared spectrum, I have two places really that I concentrate on for infrared. I always look around the 3000, 3500 mark. And what I'm looking for here is a broad sort of curved absorption that sort of follows that sort of profile. Okay, so not a spiky thing like that, but just more sort of curved. That would indicate an OH group. So it's definitely hasn't got an OH group, this thing here. Um, you can see from the fact it's only got one O, it's not going to be a carboxylic acid anyway. So basically what I'm doing here is ruling out an alcohol. These spiky um, absorptions at around 3000, you always get something like that, and that's due to CH bonds. You're not going to get a mark for that, but it's obviously something you can just think about as you as you're sort of going through the, um, the information from the spectrum. The other place I look at is around about the 1700 mark, and I'm looking for a strong absorption, which we have got here, that almost touches the bottom there, okay? Now that's due to a C double bond O. So I always encourage my students to annotate the spectra, so put an arrow off a peak or an absorption, and just say what kind of bond that's due to. So we've got a C double bond O in this molecule. There's only one oxygen, so it's either an aldehyde or a ketone. So if we move on to the mass spectrum now, first place I would always look is the peak furthest to the right. Okay, so furthest to the right, that's the molecular ion peak or M plus peak, you can call it. So you can see that's coming out at 58 or M over Z 58. So that's telling us that the MR is 58. So I would get my students to write that onto the spectrum. The other thing I'm going to look at, look for is a sort of obvious or a common um, fragment peak. So you can see we've got lots of fragment peaks here, but there's, there are some common ones and 29 is a common fragment peak. And that's due to an ethyl fragment, CH3, CH2 plus. So when the original molecule starts to break apart, if a, an ethyl fragment breaks off and carries the positive charge, it will be picked up by the mass spectrometer. So we've definitely got that there. So what we can say about our molecule is it's got an ethyl group. Just before we move on, just pick out this peak at 15, this fragment peak at M over Z 15. That's due to a methyl fragment, CH3 plus. So obviously you're going to get that quite a lot because most organic molecules have got methyl groups. Okay, so we're going to pull all that together now and come up with a structure. So I'm laying it out systematically, so it's making the examiner, you almost need to get the examiner on your side. So just lay it out nice and simply, um, nice and straightforward. So I'm saying from the infrared, the absorption at around about 1700 centimetres to minus one shows the presence of a C double bond O. So get that bond into your answer. And then from the mass spectrum, We've got a molecular ion peak at M over Z 58, so the MR is 58. The MR of the CXHY part, remember the formula is CXHYO. So the mass of the CXHY part is going to be the total mass minus 16 for the oxygen, so 42. So the rest of the molecule must have three carbons and six hydrogens. So the molecular formula is going to be C3H6O. We've got a fragment peak at M over Z29, so that indicates the presence of a C2H5 group, an ethyl group. So the possible structure is there for this molecule here, so that's obviously propanol, okay? And I've just written at the side there, it can't be propanone, even though that's got the same um, MR of 58, it would show the C double bond O in the um, infrared spectrum, 
but it wouldn't give a fragment at 29, M over Z29. It can't produce that, um, that fragment of an ethyl group. And the last part of the question, how could the mass spectrum be used to confirm the identity of the pollutant? All I'm saying here is compare the mass spectrum to a spectral database of known compounds and get a match. Next question, the greenhouse effect of a gas in the atmosphere is dependent on two factors. Suggest these two factors. Well, obviously it's going to be dependent on the concentration of the gas in the atmosphere and its ability to absorb infrared radiation. Okay, so we've got a calculation now. So we've got to calculate how much less petrol would be consumed by a typical car in 2020 to meet this regulation where a car has to emit 5.6 times 10 to the 5 grams less carbon dioxide. So the first thing I've done is worked out the reduction of CO2 in moles. So it's got to emit that many grams less CO2. So divide that by the MR of CO2. So there's that many moles reduction we've got to achieve. The moles of C8H18 would therefore be an eighth of that from that mole ratio. So we know the moles of CO2 that has to be reduced. So the moles of petrol or octane, the same is equivalent to petrol, is going to be that. So just divide that by it, we'll get 1590.91. So the mass of um, petrol reduction, moles times MR, and we get that many grams. So fairly straightforward so far, I hope you think. The tricky bit now is just getting it into litres of petrol. So we're told that one litre of petrol has a mass of 700 grams. We know the grams of petrol... So if we divide that by 700, we can find out how many litres of um, petrol, and it comes out at 259. Question number three, similar to question one. This time we've got slightly different data. Um, we've got the infrared spectrum. We don't have a mass spectrum. We're just told that the relative molecular mass is 72. So obviously in the mass spectrum, the molecular ion peak would be at 72. We're also given the percentage composition by mass. So we're obviously going to have to do some uh, kind of empirical formula calculation with that information. And then we've got to analyse all that information and come up with um, two possible structures for M. OK, so like we did before, I'm concentrating at around about the sort of 3,000, 3,500 area. We definitely haven't got um, that sort of broad absorption, that curved absorption. Just got the spikes, so it's CH, not OH. Moving on to the other sort of key place that I look about 1700. Yep, we've got something to almost touching the bottom. So we've got a seedable bond in this molecule. Now, because we don't know the number of oxygens at this point, I'm saying there it's either an aldehyde, a ketone, or it could be an ester. Um, if you've studied the ester functional group, you've got a seedable bond Just write the ester functional group looks like that. So it could be that. Okay, so let's do the empirical formula next. So it's on the next page. So we just do the, the standard thing. The percentages divided by the relative atomic masses to get the moles. Divide by the smallest to get the ratio. So the empirical formula is going to be C4H8O, which I've quite got there. We're then going to work out the MR of that, which is 72. And remember, we were told at the top of the question, the molecular mass is 72. So we're not going to multiply out here. It's got the same molecular formula, C4H8O. And then you can see in red there, I've said it's only got one O, so it's not an ester. So my, my thought that it was an ester at this point, we can rule that out now. So it's going to be an aldehyde or a ketone. Okay, so moving on to the infrared, we've got that absorption at 1700 centimetres to the minus one. So it indicates the presence of a C double bond O. So what are the possible structures? Well, it could be butanol, butanone, or 2-methylpropanol. So any two of those would be accepted. Okay, so moving on to the final question there, we've got basically a mass spectrum of compound O. We're told it contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And the questions identify the M over Z value that corresponds to the molecular ion. So remember the peak furthest to the right is the molecular ion peak, so that's at M over Z 46. So that's the answer there. Right, the formula of an ion that gives rise to the peak at M over Z 31, so this fragment peak here. 
So basically, you're just playing around with the MRs of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to get 31. So CH3O plus, or it could be CH2OH plus. Whatever you do, don't forget the positive charge because these things are always positively charged ions. And the final thing we've got to do is put that together and give a molecular formula. But be careful, I see this quite a lot. So they'll say molecular formula, and a lot of students that I mark the work for would write that. And it's, you can't get write that because it's not a molecular formula. So molecular formula just shows the number of each type of atom. There's no kind of structural information at all. So the answer there was C2H6O. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. You'd really be helping me out if you do that. This uh, video is part of um, quite a lot of videos in a playlist uh, called Test Yourself A-Level Chemistry. So if you want to do more of this just to kind of practice, keep practicing your um, chemistry, then check out that uh, playlist and I'll put the link at the top of the screen there for you.